think I'll start with the farm. Um, in 2002, I went to visit the farm because uh, Willie Picton was then just uh, arrested for the murder of uh, 26 women, uh, which would lead then to a very contracted uh, court case and discovery that he killed something like 48 women. But I wanted to make it about the victims rather than about the, the perpetrator. But it was important to, I think, document that. Now, I immigrated from South Africa in 1988 to Vancouver, and that's when the women started uh, disappearing, really, on downtown east side. So the work you see here is based on the two tragedies, what's happened uh, in downtown Eastside in Vancouver and up north in northern BC, which became known as the Highway of Tears. Now, it's a short stretch between uh, Prince George and Prince Rupert, uh, Highway 16. My son's a professor up at the university there, so we visit there quite a lot. Um, by the time when I started the project, I think there were about 68 women which have been missing from two blocks uh, in downtown Eastside. And currently, I believe that something like 120 women have vanished from there. Now, they went missing. They were not, their bodies were not discovered until they uh, arrested Willie Picton. Now, when I started the project, I, I had to be, I'm a, a white male doing something about violence against women. I haven't been asked to make a memorial, so, and I have my own reasons why I do it. But I wanted to concentrate it on the two tragedies, and not the artist itself. Now, I make the work, but I'm not the story. So, um, you also don't want to exploit the subject matter further. It's a difficult thing. Uh, you know, and that's also a very emotional subject for many reasons. So I decided to uh, look at Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper, and I wanted to see what makes it such a beautiful and effective composition. And I had a show of that in Montreal. Um, and I, what I did is I slowly scrubbed out the imagery so that only the architectural element was left through the taping, so the actual room. So the later paintings look, look abstract. But it still has sort of a spiritual quality, you know. Leonardo da Vinci was not a Christian, but he made probably the most powerful painting uh, about that religion, which became the largest religion in the world. Um, so that was uh, for me to see, I want to have a scale, and I, want sort of, I wanted a third scale of the actual Last Supper. The Last Supper is three times the size of that painting. So I made a number of works. I sketched these in first of all, and I decided to make it quite frontal. So that, um, the, in, in, in their numbers, it gives power to their voice. So that these women are, you know, they're the most, um, they were all in the sex trade. Uh, they're the most vulnerable in society, and they fall through the cracks. The, Highway of Tears is a separate matter. These were, none of these young girls were in actual fact in a sex trade. They were just hitchhiking between two points, and they vanished from that. Now, you have had similar experiences near in Seattle. There's been serial killers who's been, you know, flying, the, uh, obviously cruising the streets and doing some similar stuff. Um, but in the end of the day, what I hope to accomplish is that it would move people to act. You know. So, uh, rather than to stay stuck on 
that. You know, how can you, in downtown Eastside, there's a, a society called the uh, um, Drop-In Center, Least Drop-In Center, and they look after 120 women. Uh, they have freedom to come in there, watch TV, have a shower, um, have them checked out whether they have AIDS or not, and get their injections and all that type of stuff. So, um, that's a, for me, those are the people who are on the front lines. They actually do something about it. Yeah. Um, and we hope that politicians will act when it becomes, uh, when the sex trade becomes legal, so that, you know, I mean, that will, won't take care of underage sex, but in the sex trade, but it will help a woman protect them in some form or manner if it's actually not a crime in what they're doing. So that they actually can have, they don't have to have pumps who run the streets for them. As far as the Highway of Tears is concerned, we hope that the federal government will uh, have a free bus service between these two cities uh, so that they don't have to hitchhike. You know. uh, these two paintings form one painting. We're uh, that's a flower memorial, and I've taken it from uh, 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 the railway station in London when the at King's Cross, when the terrorist act was taking place there, the public had an outpouring of, you know, instead of being going to aid another country, there was an outpouring of grief of two kilometers of flowers. So I, I believe that was a, a wonderful way of, of engaging uh, what has happened, taken place. So I transferred some of that imagery, not easy to do because um, you know, these flower things are quite volatile really, and pink and plastic and, you know, they're not, it's difficult things, it's like a courtroom, you know, they're not very beautiful things to paint, <laughs> they're very difficult to make them look interesting, you know. But I hope that, you know, in the end that you get the feeling of this impromptu um, outpouring by the general public of you know, showing their feelings and uh, the direction. Now, I, I have a way of painting where I uh, obscure <coughs> and reveal and so, and also the taping. Uh, it started originally when I went to, you know, had drawing someone on upscale and I, as an art student, I would then tape it and upscale it that way, and then it became part of my process of, it puts sort of, you know, we all know that painting is uh, illusions of three dimensional, you know, it's not two dimensional surface. So, and it also breaks the, the imagery. Now, those tapings, so I taped to the, to the linen, this is raw linen, which had been treated with clear gesso. And then those tapings that comes off, uh, I've used in uh, the pieces which are actually called tapings. And that's the actual size of them. So I made 84 of those which direct to, for each woman who vanished from downtown east side. Uh, some of the, the larger tapings are uh, just the borders around the pieces. Um, and the other ones, of course, from inside the actual painting. So they, they retain some of the uh, imagery, but they, they become also very abstract. Uh, they tend to look a little bit like DNA in a way, because in a way, um, in their abstract uh, appeal. Uh, they are normally presented flat uh, in uh, metal trays, which is a sort of sculpture which I built, and they normally. And these are not the originals, these are prints I've made on uh, metal. Um, the project has really been funded by those, and I, I believe most of the time when people buy those paintings, they don't connect it to the subject. They, they just love them as you know, abstract paintings. And, um, so most of those I've sold, and that actually has funded the project. So for this exhibition, I've printed some. I, I made 12 of them just to give you an idea of the process. The, <clears throat> the Missing Women series at the moment is uh, 128 paintings. 
and uh, the Highway of Tears is 58 paintings. So we've made a selection um, of a way we could borrow nearby from people who own these paintings and stuff which I had in my own inventory. Uh, that's another farm painting. I've made about five farm paintings through the years and uh, uh, that one's taken from a photograph, an aerial photograph, which was in the newspapers. Now the courtrooms I paint because I feel we're all in that courtroom. We're not Billy Picton, but uh, it happens under our watch and uh, you know, if any other profession, for instance, let's say three or four lawyers have disappeared, then immediately I think uh, the RCMP would have thought, hey, there's a, you know, a serial killer at play here and, you know, and something would, be, would have been done by it. So, yeah. uh, the large pyramidal paintings, there's five pyramidal, pyramidal paintings I've done. Now, during the Renaissance, but uh, the compositions normally are were pyramidal to clearly uh, cite and to make a powerful image. Uh, so what I've done is I've just taken away the, the sides of it, and uh, what I could do with this one then, I've done from the women who disappeared first to the last victims uh, at the top. Uh, some of them are... Uh, that particular shape and some of them a little bit longer in uh, the longer pyramid. Um, I, I'm not a, I'm a visual artist, I'm not good with words. Uh, it's my preference, so I think the, the painting speaks to you, but I have supplied uh, through the years there were some art critics who's written about the work and other work of mine, so we have put some good uh, wall labels up, and I invite you to read those. It's much more eloquent than what I can talk about <laughs> art. That's their, you know, that's their area. Um, if we move to the side, uh, this is the woman which Willie Pickman was actually on file for. So that's why it's a smaller composite painting. And that is the courtroom where the, the trial took place. The red courtroom was originally built for the Air India trial, uh, which was another major tragedy in uh, Canadian history. Uh, and later on, uh, it was you know, used, of course, today it's used uh, for fall trials. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a strange place because this where you see the cabinets there, that's all bulletproof glass there. Mm. And then the Highway of Tears is normally a, a, a composition of 24 paintings, and then I made a second series, which are also 24 paintings, so 48 paintings at all. Uh, I don't have many of them in my uh, uh, inventory, so I, I brought uh, 16 of them to give you an idea of the, and I superimposed by, by double portraits uh, in a way so it, it, to suggest what he is and what could have been, you know. Um, and then superimposed with his flower, uh, flower paintings. And we put two poems. They were inspired by uh, an American poet, Mary Oliver, who wrote uh, a poem called Goldenrod and one called Peonis. And uh, when I read those, I thought it just absolutely speaks to, uh, and I invite you to read those just it's, uh, it will give you a further insight into the, into the work. The portrait, which the large head, which is at the entrance here, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, is a model which I, uh, a, a person who posed for us quite regularly. And uh, my daughter went through a difficult period at one stage. I thought I wanted to connect somebody in my life to this. Um, I don't know if you have any questions. Did you talk about this one? This courtroom you haven't spoken about? Yeah, that's the courtroom which were uh, in uh, New 
Irish minister where the trial took place for the Willie Pitt oh, okay. trial. But in this too, right? And this is uh, originally was built for the Air India trial, uh, Flight 182, uh, mm. Mm. but is now used uh, and has been used for some other serial murders which have taken place in Vancouver. Oh. And it needed bulletproof glass. Yeah. And this is where the trial took for the murders. Murder of Olympic trial. So looking at your work, I'm I'm seeing the images that I can recognize faces and some flowers and some chairs and whatnot. But what I really saw the very first moment I walked into the gallery were the horizontal, vertical and horizontal lines that yeah, you've yeah. created through the piece. Now, maybe you just said something about it, but I didn't catch it. Can you tell yeah. me again yeah, what I, is inspiring um, about that? I'm taking you back to 